Thank you for joining us today. I'm Pam Fairman, Bellevue Parks and Community Services Capital Manager. We're here to look at the future of Bellevue's Maidenbauer Bay Park and explore expanding the existing park east toward downtown and Old Bellevue. Before we begin, on behalf of the City of Bellevue, I want to acknowledge that we are on the indigenous land of Coast Salish people who have reserved treaty rights to this land, including the Duwamish, Suquamish, Muckleshoot, and Snoqualmie Indian tribe. We thank these caregivers of this land who have lived and continue to live here since time immemorial. This evening, we have the opportunity to discuss how we can continue to create a city that serves everyone and preserves the natural beauty and ecology of the area. We will share what we've heard from you over this past year and how your feedback on Maidenbauer Bay Park has been incorporated with research on codes, traffic, and park use to guide next steps for design and implementation. Hearing your feedback through our new survey and other avenues of engagement, much of it through in-person events around the city, will continue to guide how we implement and sequence this project. Ultimately, City Council will make the final decisions on the park's next design phase. A schedule for the full implementation of park design and construction has not yet been set and will likely be done in phases and take years to complete. During that time, the City of Bellevue will continue to evolve and permitting requirements may change. Our ask of you today is to take the survey, tell us your priorities and what you're most excited about and inspired by. Your priorities will help shape the future design, phasing, and investment in the park. Now, I will hand it off to our consultant team to discuss constraints, possibilities for our next potential expansion areas of the park, and provide an update on where we are in the process. Thank you, Pam. I am Andy Mitten with Birder Partnership. We are a landscape architecture firm working with the City of Bellevue Parks and a team of experts to study implementation of the park. To dive right in, development of the park is guided by the Maidenbauer Bay Park and Land Use Plan completed in 2010. This 90-page document provides a framework of design and implementation principles that are to be used as phases of the park are constructed. These principles were discussed during the fall 2023 survey, so we won't examine them in depth in this presentation. For those curious, they are available on the website. The illustrative plan from 2010, shown on the screen here over today's Bellevue, was the suggested build out of the future park framework. This illustrative plan is not the only way to implement the park, and the written report acknowledges that research into the built and permitting environment will be needed at the time of construction for each, each phase of the project. This is why we're here today. Based on a great deal of research, we're going to show you an evolution of the 2010 plan that responds to today's realities. In the fall 2023 survey, you provided input on the 2010 design principles as indicated on this slide. This gives us an updated perspective on the priorities since the 2010 planning process. Thanks to that feedback, we heard a few new priorities and an emphasis on some of the 2010 priorities. Top priorities we heard from the fall of 2023 survey are indicated in the middle of the slide. A few things that rose to the top included strengthening pedestrian connections and trying to find ways to navigate the steep hillside. Parking and overcrowding during summer peak use is also an issue. Another priority was to provide a variety of amenities such as spaces of varying sizes, shaded and covered areas, and spaces for different types of uses. One opportunity in particular is to identify what could be added to the enclosed spaces shown in the 2010 plan. For instance, we heard that people would like to see compatible commerce in the park. Guided by the 2010 plan, mobile vendors could be incorporated into these spaces. The 2010 plan and the fall 2023 input gives us a guiding light for what the project needs to achieve. We're now going to take you quickly through the 2010 design, and then we'll walk through the evolution of the plan based on the 2024 realities. 
Much of the 2010 plan has already been implemented in today's park, including the ecologically enhanced ravine and nature trails, the amazing public swim beach and curved pier, the playground, bathroom, and kayak launch. All these amenities were suggested in the 2010 plan and are well loved today. Now we're going to look at what has not yet been realized to understand the key elements included in the 2010 plan. We'll leave the Whaler building for a minute to journey up to Main Street and walk through what the plan envisioned as you approach Maidenbower Bay Park from Old Bellevue. The 2010 plan was focused on providing a seamless experience from Old Bellevue down to the bay. The key plan in the lower left-hand side of the slide will help orient you to different aspects of the project as we continue our journey. As we approach the park from Old Bellevue, we first come to what is lovingly called the kite site because of its shape, highlighted in magenta in the key plan. At street level, the plan shows a public plaza, iconic pergola, water feature, vegetation, views, an interior public space, and terrace seating. The next part of the 2010 plan focused on the pedestrian experience down the slope to the shore as indicated in the white outline on the plan. This area is about 15 feet lower and the park elements include stairs, an elevator to provide ADA access, views, and vegetation. Below all of these improvements, the 2010 plan had proposed more parking, which we know is critically needed. The parking was underground with access envisioned off Lake Washington Boulevard and Maidenbower Way Southeast as indicated here by the black arrows on the plan. To provide another pedestrian experience, the plan proposed 100th Avenue Southeast and Bellevue Place would be closed to vehicular traffic and function as park space dominated by a staircase as indicated by the white outline here. The plan also showed a bridge extending to an elevator near the shoreline to provide ADA compliant and accessible access to the shore level as shown by the white outline below. We are now entering what is called the marina and shoreline zone as indicated on the key plan to the left. Once on the shore, the plan replaced the expanse of asphalt that is there today with an extension of the existing park promenade shown by the white arrow. This promenade doubles as emergency vehicle and park operations access and integrates with an ecologically restored shoreline. The 2010 plan also reconfigured the marina 14-day use slips were shown. Piers 1 and 2 were reconfigured for 38 to 48 monthly slips, and Pier 3 became the connection point for a floating boardwalk paralleling the shoreline. Key goals included improving ecology and opening up views of the bay to pedestrians. This brings us back to the Whaler Building indicated in the white outline on the slide. The 2010 plan preserved the Whaler building and adapted it for community use, including a plaza space on the shore. This area included a drop-off area, limited accessible parking, a vehicular connection to 99th, which exists today, and a pedestrian connection to the existing park. Next, we will move up to the corner of 99th Avenue Southeast and Lake Washington Boulevard, where the 2010 plan showed an underground parking garage with a new below grade activity building. The activity building is accessible from Lake Washington Boulevard via an elevator. Potential uses include meeting space for organized programs, as well as providing a space to enjoy the park during inclement weather. From the top of 99th Avenue Southeast and journeying back to the kite site, it was proposed that a sidewalk connection be added on Lake Washington Boulevard to tie the phase one park back to Main Street and the rest of the park is indicated by the white arrow on the plan. Now that we've journeyed through the main design points of the 2010 plan as diagrammatically shown here, we'll now look at how plans have evolved to meet 2024 conditions and community priorities. The evolution of the kite site at Harnath Avenue Southeast considers design goals of the 2010 plan the 2010 Implementation Principles, City Planning Priorities since 2010, and Community Priorities shared in our recent Fall 2023 survey. These are summarized on this slide as a reminder of what we've discussed so far in the presentation. Now, we'll journey to the kite site.
Starting with the experience from Main Street, the refined design acknowledges Bellevue's grand connection vision of creating an icon that anchors Main Street and cues the journey down to the water and to the grand connection terminus, the phase one curved pier. To do this, the covered gathering space shown in the 2010 plan is brought up to Lake Washington Boulevard. This rendering begins to explore what this could look like. This iconic space is shaped by views as indicated on this slide, where a sloped roof brings people above the surrounding buildings to see the bay, Cascade and Olympic Mountains. The covered space below is continuous with an outdoor plaza, creating a gathering space for the park and Old Bellevue. Under the elevated viewpoint we saw on the previous slide, as shown here, is a contiguous plaza space. Some of this space might be enclosed to promote park use in inclement weather. The size of this space is flexible and we will be defined when indoor space is identified in the future. The journey down the hill from the plaza is linked to 100th Ave Southeast, so we'll move over to the 100th next. The team has found that closing 100th does not effectively serve the project well and that closure is infeasible in today's conditions. For this discussion, we'll step back and look at the area diagrammatically. In this slide, we have removed the 2010 plan and are now showing an aerial image of the existing conditions that are present today. This allows us to understand how closing 100th would impact adjacent properties. Conversations with city departments have determined that keeping 100th Ave Southeast open to vehicular access is critical to providing emergency access to the existing apartment buildings to the east represented by the white outline here. Keeping 100th Ave Southeast open creates interesting opportunities to increase pedestrian and bicycle safety and create a park-centric lane as indicated by the arrow on the screen. By moving park, parking access from Lake Washington Boulevard to 100th Ave as represented on the slide, Lake Washington Boulevard becomes a safer connection for pedestrians and cyclists. As shown by the yellow arrow here, this is one of the top priorities that we heard about in the fall. Moving access to 100th Ave Southeast also allows for intuitive signalized vehicular movements into the proposed parking area. The purple arrow shows vehicular circulation and access to the park. 100th Ave Southeast is sloped in such a way that the street provides natural access to parking levels as indicated in the gray shape on the slide. This allows more footprint to be used for parking on a tight site and more resources to be applied to park experience and amenities instead of parking infrastructure. We are in the process of studying what 100th Ave Southeast could look like, including two-way and one-way alternatives. The roadway will be as narrow as traffic counts allow, with traffic calming elements to encourage slower speeds and a park-like atmosphere, something we're thinking of as the park lane. The intersection of 100th Ave Southeast, Lake Washington Boulevard, and Main Street will be designed to emphasize pedestrian priority and safety. Now that we have talked about 100th, we're going to move back to the kite site experience. As you can see in this view, looking at the kite site from below, the journey down the site hovers over the open air parking layers. Vegetation is integrated into the pedestrian experience designed such that parking is concealed. The goal is for this such structure to blend into the landscape and serve numerous purposes. Here are some 3D views to help visualize how the structure works on the site. Starting with the sloped ground, Parking layers are set into the hillside and the entire pedestrian experience from the plaza to the bay floats over top, gently sloped to accommodate all park visitors while providing wide terraces for circulation. Views, overlooks, and seating areas are also incorporated. Gathering spaces are integrated along with frame views to the bay as indicated in this cross section that we will explore a bit further in the next few slides. We aim to provide a variety of experiences for park users, such as integrated seat steps along the path. The experience is shaped so the parking is concealed as indicated by the red arrows and views of the bay emphasized as indicated by the blue arrows while carefully respecting privacy for the surrounding residents. 
Near 100th Ave Southeast, the path touches down at each turn, creating easy wheeled access to each layer of parking and the walkway along 100th Ave Southeast. This offers opportunities for shortcuts down the hill and invites people in from the neighborhood. 100th Ave Southeast becomes a staircase on the west side and a typical sidewalk on the east side for quicker routes down the hill. At the lowest point on the kite site, the path navigates around two large conifers over the View Apartments driveway and continues down to the shoreline, shown by the purple circle. The 2010 plan relied only on an elevator connection at this point. One of the critical choices made by the project team is to remove sole dependence on elevators wherever possible. This is partly because elevators break down, which would create areas that are not accessible to people with disabilities or other mobility needs like using a stroller. An elevator or stair could continue to be an alternate path of travel. The ramp connecting the kite site and the shore becomes a magnetic element of the project, elevating people up and over the water with moments of pause available along the way. The shoreline experience keeps the priorities of the 2010 plan alive, emphasizing pedestrian connection, our beautiful surroundings, and amazing park experiences. The orange arrow here represents the pedestrian promenade that includes access for emergency and maintenance vehicles. And the light orange dashed arrow represents the slope connection between the kite site and shoreline. Removing the existing bulkhead at the shoreline that is failing and constructing a new one further back shifts the new lake edge to the north, which responds to permitting realities and creates the most ecologically rich shoreline possible. This is represented here with the green bands at the shoreline. Seating areas are nestled along the promenade that create new points of pause along the shore to view the bay. These are indicated by the red stars on the slide. At the west end of the shoreline is the Whaler Building Plaza, outlined here in white. This includes a gathering area that celebrates the historic Whaler Building and Ice House. We propose keeping the current vehicular access down to the shoreline from 99th, with a small parking lot providing space for unloading for the marina and personal watercraft, as well as limited accessible parking. There is currently a connection challenge between the shoreline and the current park, with many demands on this tight space as indicated by the arrows on this slide. The team is studying how to create a strong continuation of the promenade to the phase one park while celebrating the site's history. Part of this study includes layering more amenities to serve the park into the area near the existing beach, potentially including more intuitive kayak access. The survey asks for your feedback on priorities for this area. The next few slides will focus on the marina and has been one of the focuses of our team and our research. Guided by the 2010 plan, we've studied options for how to create an ecologically awesome shoreline compatible with the marina. After assessing current codes and regulations that have changed since 2010, we have discovered adjustments are needed to the original proposal. A primary guideline of the 2010 plan was to enhance the ecology of the site and in particular the shoreline. The main tools available to create a high functioning ecological zone at the marina is to remove the existing bulkhead to soften the shoreline. The green bands on the slide represent how we can better connect the shore to open water. Softening the edge effectively makes our shoreline shallower and creates a boundary where functional boat slips can begin without hitting the bottom of the lake about at the location indicated by the dashed line on the slide. A second constraint is the Department of Natural Resources line of navigability, which limits the extensive piers and is located where the second dashed line is on the slide. You can see the existing piers basically fall within this line, as does the current phase one curved pier. A big implication here is that this line means that the lengthened piers proposed in the 2010 plan are not feasible. The third constraint is the near shoreline, indicated by, by the blue overlay here, which defines the most ecologically sensitive and strict permitting zone. Basically, within this line, we need to stay within the footprint of the existing piers as much as possible partially to promote fish travel from the softened shoreline to open water as indicated by the purple lines. 
These constraints make it difficult to meet the slip quantity suggested in the 2010 plan illustration. For context, the current marina has 81 monthly slips and 14 visitor slips. The 2010 plan included about half of the current moorage, 38 to 48 monthly slips and 14 visitor, visitor slips. With the outline constraints, it is possible to provide between 10 and 36 monthly slips and at least 14 visitor slips. We need your help to understand your priorities to further shape the future of the marina. Next, we are shifting over to 99th Avenue Southeast corner. 99th Avenue Southeast continues to be the primary access for loading at the marina and beach. 99th Avenue Southeast itself may remain as it is today, but the adjacent corner of the park has some options that we want your help prioritizing. This area is an opportunity to provide some of the priorities heard in the fall, including create more accessible and less steep routes in the park, provide more parking, and offer more varied amenity spaces. The 2010 plan showed an activity building near the level of Lake Washington Boulevard. The activity building would support organized programs at the park and provide a space to enjoy the park during inclement weather. This building is still a possibility as indicated in this section. This image shows the grade relationship of the 2010 proposal to the Lake Washington Boulevard, a new parking garage, and the existing park. The building is shown by the yellow box. This location would require an elevator shown by the arrows for accessible travel to the park and parking and would provide plaza-like terrace spaces. The team studied alternative locations for the activity building. Placing the building mid-slope, as depicted by the yellow box here, would not need an elevator to connect to the park or parking and would provide flatter areas near Lake Washington Boulevard. Another potential location showed by the yellow box here is a smaller space adjacent to the park promenade across from the existing restroom roof plaza. An accessible path would connect to parking. On the roof of the parking structure, added park amenities would include small areas of seating connected by slope paths and stairs. Alternatively, if an activity building is not desired here, there are a few options we can explore to provide new park elements and parking at the 99th Avenue Southeast site. As indicated in this section from Lake Washington Boulevard down to the existing park path and beach building, the corner could simply provide pockets of seating and pausing areas. The hillside would be terraced with stairs and walking paths down the hill. Seating areas could be integrated along the pathways. If additional parking is prioritized at this location, the parking garage could be uncovered with a small area of a park improvements near Lake Washington Boulevard. The parking garage would be connected to the phase one park with ramps set into the hill. Or the parking garage could be covered with park space over the top shown by the green area, creating opportunities for some larger flatter terraces. Each of these options comes with its own price point and carbon footprint, which are important factors to consider when making these decisions. In the survey, we ask for your help to understand priorities for this corner of 99th Avenue Southeast. Stepping back to look at the full phase one and phase two site, one of the priorities of the 2010 plan and a top priority were heard in the fall 2023 is parking. We have heard there needs to be more parking that is easy to find and please make it accessible. The existing ravine and Lake Washington Boulevard parking lot shown here in yellow are proposed to remain and be supplemented by other parking areas. This is where you come in. The team recommends the circled parcel across from the kite site to be surface parking with around 30 stalls in the near term. This is the lowest cost solution to an immediate parking need. If future phases provide or replace this parking need, the parcel could be developed in a different way later. There are about 60 potential parking spaces at the kite site and 60 potential parking spaces at the 99th Avenue Southeast site. Numbers above 60 stalls at the Kite site or 99th Ave Southeast would require adding stacked parking layers and come with a higher price point and carbon footprint. Here again, we need your help to understand where to prioritize parking in the near and long term. 
The final element to discuss tonight is Lake Washington Boulevard. Lake Washington Boulevard is currently being studied by the Bike Bellevue Initiative for near-term improvements and by our team for long-term options. The near-term improvements include extending bike lanes between 99th Ave Southeast and Main Street as represented by the yellow arrows on the slide. The proposed long-term option is similar to the 2010 plan with a sidewalk and bike lane infrastructure. A planting area will separate the sidewalk from the roadway where possible, and a built screen will preserve privacy of the adjacent apartments. This could create a safer, more walkable and bikeable area for the community. This brings us back to the beginning of our journey throughout the site. Thank you for joining us and exploring the future of Maidenbower Bay Park and the exciting possibilities for this space. The design team greatly appreciates your time and we look forward to hearing your input. We're always happy to answer questions via email. Please participate in the online survey. This is the most important tool we have for understanding your perspectives on this project. The survey can be found on the project website at the website shown on this slide. You can also come talk to us at our summer events, which are listed on our website. And refer to the website for updates as we continue to refine the design options based on the 2010 master plan, your feedback and continued analysis of the site.